Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Update, drone hits airplane, not true. E-Fusion electric airplane takes flight. ANN's AEA 2016 final schedule update. I'm Bree Cross, it's April 26, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A report of a drone possibly colliding with a British Airways A320 on approach to Heathrow nearly broke the internet. There were tons of breathless stories and offers to media outlets for experts to discuss the problem. When we relayed this report this week, we also said it was still being investigated and that the airplane had suffered no damage. It looks like it was worth it to be a bit skeptical. The UK newspaper The Telegraph now reports that Transport Minister Robert Goodwill said that there had been no confirmation that a UAV had come into contact with the airplane. In fact, it may have been a plastic bag. Goodwill said in a statement that the reported drone strike had not been confirmed. Quote, it was the local police force that tweeted that they had a report of a drone striking an aircraft. While it was worth reporting and unknowledgeable people flying drones in the vicinity of an airport is a real problem. Maybe this will encourage people to find out more about drone safety. While the flight of the solar-powered Solar Impulse 2 is making news as it continues its flight around the world, its mission is about the future. In this report, we find an electric airplane that's aimed at a more immediate market. The all-electric Magnus E-Fusion made its maiden flight in Hungary earlier this month. The E-Fusion of the Magnus Aircraft Corporation is a two-seat, side-by-side, low-wing monoplane with fixed tricycle landing gear. Siemens designed a battery system for aviation use and optimized the electric propulsion system for application in the cost-sensitive segment of very light, light sport, and ultralight aircraft. Frank Anton, head of e-aircraft at Siemens, said, quote, The maiden flight of the e-fusion is another important milestone in electric aviation. The aircraft will serve as a flying test bed for our further battery system optimization. Magnus Aircraft says the electric aircraft has the potential to be used for pilot training as well. The company says the E-Fusion has aerobatic capability, so it can serve for upset recovery training for airliner pilots and others. After the break, the FAA approves a new angle of attack system. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The FAA has approved a new angle of attack system for Mitsubishi MU-2 aircraft. The angle of attack system was developed in cooperation with Alpha Systems AOA. For the MU-2 turboprop installation, Alpha Systems customized its standard AOA systems to incorporate all MU-2 flap settings. It's reported the system will provide visual and audio indications of angle of attack for all approach and departure phases of flight. The angle of attack display is located above the glare shield, which means it is always in the pilot's vision. Installation kits are available from the MU-2 parts center. The kits include all necessary components to be installed on an MU-2. After the break, the AMA responds to the FAA reauthorization bill. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. The Academy of Model Aeronautics says that all is not well with the Senate FAA reauthorization bill as it relates to model aircraft operators. 
In a message to their members, the AMA said the Senate did not incorporate some of AMA suggestions. AMA said they are disappointed with several of the provisions that passed the Senate which could undermine their community's model aircraft activity and detract from the creativity, innovation and enjoyment of the hobby. One provision of the bill requires modelers to meet FAA design and production standards. It also requires members ages 13 and above to take an online FAA safety test despite the fact that the AMA has its own safety rules and training and its members have operated safely for decades. The AMA says the more favorable House version of the FAA reauthorization bill still needs to go to a floor vote and that they will continue to work with allies in Congress to protect and strengthen their long-standing safe and educational hobby. As we conclude today's Airborne Unlimited broadcast, things will look different for the rest of the week. The cast and crew of Airborne Unlimited is headed to Orlando, Florida, and will be broadcasting live from the Aircraft Electronics Association's annual convention. We'll be back with our regular broadcast format next week. Here's this week's schedule for our live coverage from the AEA convention. On Wednesday, April 27th, coverage from the floor of the 59th Annual AEA Convention and Trade Show runs from 8.30 a.m. until 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be covering the opening ceremonies, awards, and an address by FAA Administrator Michael Huerta. We expect to start with our new product introduction programming at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. This is a part of the program you don't want to miss. Then at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, April 28th, we continue with our extended coverage of the most fascinating new products, programs, and people. There will be 10 to 12 live interviews about the state of the avionics industry and a continued introduction of the most intriguing new products. We continue on Friday, April 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time when we webcast additional live coverage of more fascinating new and original products and programs. You'll have a choice of web connections, so please join us live from the floor at AEA 2016. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.